6.45 a.m. We are probably 15, 20 minutes away from the border, getting some fuel, and then we're hitting the road. And uh, should be there 12.30-ish, maybe one o'clock by the time we stop again a couple times, Tim Hortons, probably. I guess uh, Pat and the guys are already up there. We're meeting them at our hotel for lunch. I hope all the work this week uh, pays off and it's a fun time. Where's all the snow? Hopefully we had about like an hour what are we two hours from the hotel it's three degrees in fuel the roads ice it's like ice road truckers out here but we found some snow we found winter so can't complain we made it it's awfully bright I can't see nothing it to our little chalet deal here this place is awesome we did find some snow so we are staying at evasion parabonka pat is tour guide as usual up here and uh yeah we're gonna see how this fresh 862 goes so this is a indie specialties 862 long rod stroker And she's got a bunch of premix, so I'm not too surprised we got a little bit of a bog there when we grab throttle. But again, we are two tenths of a mile into it, so we'll see how it goes. I just took a wild guess at clutching and everything, really. Take it easy on it for a while and just kind of get some miles on it before we really go beating on it. But it is incredibly smooth. Holy cow. It's like there is no vibration in the bars. This thing is very, very smooth. Even at idle, it just sits there and kind of, I don't know, it doesn't really do anything. It just sits there and idles. Definitely not necessarily icy trails, but very hard, very firm underneath. We don't have a lot of, a lot of fluff on top, especially here. We've also got the 850 pipe on here instead of the 9r pipe and y like they wanted originally but we're trying this out because this is all that we could get for this weekend in short time wow this thing is so smooth Woo! huh max det warning that's not very good we don't like to see that Well, apparently you can't ride it gentle. It does not like that 6,000 RPM bleeding spot. Oh. Oh. Let's see what that is. Well, I guess I shouldn't have been at the back. Um, discovery in my scramble to get everything done I apparently didn't tighten the exhaust temp sensor so that came out and uh, that's probably why it's not running right once that fell out I switched one plug I'm gonna put that back hopefully the boys turn around for me at some point here hopefully it is not damaged someone will have some pliers and then I can go and disconnect the battery to clear the codes. Son of a bitch. It just gets better and better. Ooh, okay, we got that. That crisis is averted. Always an adventure, you know? Yep, I never tightened this. I threaded it in, I plugged it in, and then fucking off I went. So that's on me. So I, I don't even know. I think we made it like 10 miles and I was having some TET issues with this thing. It was great for like the first seven. 
And then the last three, it's just been throwing DET like crazy. The group just kept going. I've been here for like 10 minutes, probably. Always an adventure. I got swapped the spark plug, dropped the spark plug socket in the belly pan, picked that out. Just been hanging out, you know, waiting for the group to realize I'm not there. Bluebird day, sunny. We're out on actual snowy trails. They'll be along sometime. Until then, I'm just gonna hang out. Maybe some birds will show up or a moose. But yeah, uh, the exhaust temp sensor fell out because apparently in my mad dash and scramble to get everything together, I must have forgotten to tighten that. So that fell out and I'm sure that's throwing everything out of whack. So yeah, hopefully nothing got damaged in the three miles it ran after that fell out. So fingers crossed I can put that in, disconnect the battery, clear the codes, fire it back up. There's one. I just need a 10 mil, but I can fish it out of mine if you don't have one. 17. Let's go. There's some snow on top and then a really, really hard base and I'm not studded, so it just kind of spins a little bit when it blows this top layer off, but uh, I'm curious if I can get it to hook what she's going to be like. <laughs> I put two clicks in that rear track shock before we left. If you watched the previous riding video on Island Pond, I've faded that shock a few times now. It's been whooped all year long. Uh, Andy told me that that 175 wouldn't hold up to my abuse, but the budget is what the budget is. So we ran it for a while, put two clicks in it to get by. Uh, it's a little stiff right now, but if we encounter rough stuff and really start beating on it, it'll come into it or like that right there. This thing's got some torque. <laughs> I still can't get over how smooth this thing is. Yeah, this thing is a runner, dude. Those little bursts where you do get it to hook, even though it's not like whipping up to RPM crazy, it just has that torquey punch that starts to pull your arms. It's kind of cool. I haven't noticed a drastic change to the dynamic of the machine in terms of handling or like the 650 feeling way lighter. This obviously does feel a little bit torqueier. Well, a lot a bit torqueier. But it still seems as though the sled is receptive to changing directions and response and all that kind of stuff. This engine is four pounds heavier long block to long block. I weighed that. So that's not a huge weight difference, but it is something. I'm assuming some of it is rotating mass, right? So I don't know. So far, like I said, I haven't noticed it being drastically different in the dynamic department but I have not had a chance to really pound it through some rough stuff yet, Vermont style tight, twisty, rough trails. So until then, I probably won't comment on it too much more and we're just gonna keep on riding. Whoa. <laughs> you can hear it actually hook that time and pull 8150 instead of like 83. Dang, that's cool. Wow. Oh boy, she's fucking got some balls, dude. <laughs> That's so cool. Woo. Dang. This thing's cool. Oh, 
What the f***? <laughs> oh my god! Big switcheroo! Oh boy! <laughs> so different! Two entirely different machines! good I grabbed a handful on the boost over here heard a loud pop and then a second pop and then I had absolutely no break we broke a chain or the tensioner or something uh, not good very scary straight away at the end of those trees all the way down through here and I barely made the turn came up here and then it locked up about there and thankfully stopped and then we dragged it over here. There goes the rescue team. Oh, you hunk. So, this sucks. We've uh, been waiting for the guys to run back and get the truck and trailer. 32 miles from where we were on sled to the hotel and then 42 minutes in the truck they're going as fast as they can we know that still just really sucks it's uh, about zero sun's going down and i've just walked this route i don't know how many times just trying to stay warm yeah we didn't freeze Peeps, we're alive! Hey, friends! Hello, folks. What's happening? Still maintaining some body temperature? Oh, I've, I've probably walked 15 miles. Well, that ought to work. Should be in backwards, but it'll be alright. We just gotta load her in backwards. Day two, about to get the 650 fired up. We're a little low on spirits since that thing broke and kind of made yesterday just a total disaster in terms of the last, I don't know, a couple hours of the ride. And it just brought the spirits down. It's just one of those rides where we're like, yeah, we're going to go for it and see what happens. And it's kind of probably the last one of the year. So I don't know. We're just, just in a funk, you know? We'll see. Hopefully we come out of it. Okay, when this sensor, when the exhaust temp sensor fell out of this, I guess it shorted or something, and it was not happy. So it kept the check end light stayed on. I cleared it with the map tune. It came right back immediately on startup. So I yanked the sensor out of the broken boost, threw that in here, cleared the codes again, and we seem to be good and operational now. So since the boost is broken, my father is on path G5850 for the day. A lot of grooming action allegedly. Trails are still pretty hard, but uh, that's okay. I'm trying to just kind of put that whole chain snapping ordeal out of my head because if I think about how sketchy that was, ah, uh, man, oof. With that whole chain snapping thing, if I had footage of that, I would show it, but the camera died, no joke, like five minutes before it happened. Just the luck of the draw, as usual, that just is the way it goes. But it was not fun. It was like a decently long straight, kind of like this. And I cracked into it right here, and it went wah, bop. And I'm like, what the hell? That was kind of weird. So I went to tap the brake after like the front came up. Little pop, front came down. And I went to grab the brake because the trail started to curve, and then there's a road crossing right there. And I, as soon as I touched the brake, there was a second pop, and then it just started freewheeling. And uh, then they started stopping quick for the road, and I was still cr like coasting, cruising. It wasn't slowing down. Like you think, oh, you know, two strokes don't really have that much engine braking. Oh no, 
they got some engine braking. When you got nothing in there, holy pecker does it freewheel. It was terrifying. I had to just give everything I could to hang off the side of it, get into the field, and just continue to make this sweeping turn until it eventually locked the chain up in the bottom. So continuing on with the luck of our trip here, the Benz 900T dropped a cylinder. We believe it's just a plug. It might be a coil. Really not too sure there. So we are going to destination Mount Valen to either drop the sled and rent one or try to fix it there if we can get parts or who knows. I'm overheating myself, not the sled. I'm really starting to overheat. The sun is baking us. Whew. I'm gonna have to open my helmet vents even though once I do, they are gonna freeze open. Oh, it's better. Boy, this thing does run though. I keep forgetting I got these cross country shocks up front. These things are great. They're just like I keep saying, or I said in the other video, they're just super linear. It's like, doesn't matter the size of the bump, the stroke feels the same. This is kind of exactly what I would want from a trail engine. It's super torquey, corner to corner. You grab a handful, it just f***ing pulls. I'm not, you know, a straight line race guy. So I don't know if this is the move for people going out and running on lakes. I have no feedback or information on that or how this thing's going to pull top end out the back. I don't know. But if you want a trail monster that's just super torquey corner to corner, I think this is going to be a really good option for people. That destination Mount Valen gas pump thing with the little bar and the fire and all that, it's like it's like you're at a Heyday's vendor booth, but trailside with the music going and the little store there, that is one awesome spot. Just all in all, really cool area. Look at this place. I've never been here, so some people are probably like, oh yeah, that's where we go all the time. But I've never been here. This is incredible. Now we are back on the trail to go get some food, I think. Pat said we're headed to La Chapelle for lunch. Cool. This 
this is the stuff I came up here to ride. This is awesome. Sounds great. Oh, I love this chassis so much. This belt is cooked. And she's still pulling, but you can tell it's a little down. Relay La Chapelle. I don't know where we're headed now. We can get top off the of fuel somewhere. cabin here evasion parabonka hopefully i'm saying it right towards the last like third of the ride the camera battery died and honestly i didn't really feel like changing it we were all kind of in the groove riding really good and we were just kind of getting after it and i didn't really feel like swapping a battery i kind of wanted to just take some time to myself to just ride and enjoy riding again not that it's not enjoyable creating content and talking and narrating everything but at the end of this season here, it's kind of been a rough end with snow being really rough and scrambling scrambling to get parts in and just make this last trip happen that I just took that last leg of the trip to really just ride and enjoy riding again and just kind of be with myself in my thoughts and ride and not really focus on just set up stuff and engines and whatever. And I just ignored everything and just rode. And it was really awesome and it helped kind of 
tie the end of the season and the end of the trip together and bring enjoyment back into it. So that's why there's not a lot of footage at the end of this trip here. Just quick explanation why there wasn't a ton of footage from today. <laughs> <laughs>